What's going on, everybody? It's your buddy, it's your pal, Spaz Phoenix, the YWC Reality Check, and you know the drill. You don't see my pretty sexy face, so I'm not alone. Somebody say hello. Come on, baby! Oh, that's not hello. That's me, Jared Trolling. Hi, I'm John, everybody, from Vocal Aggression, coming at you with this collab with Spaz Phoenix, but I, too, am not alone, because to my left, my partner in crime, 619 uh, Apocalypse Preston. Baby! You were about to say loyalist! <laughs> No, I was going to say Armageddon, actually. No, oh, yeah, I was Armageddon, too. Armageddon. No, no six, 619 Mercenary. <laughs> Isn't it? Can't remember that, folks. Yeah. <laughs> from from, yeah, from 619 Albatross to 619 Zebra. <laughs> Anyways, and the topic of the day, the to wow, I just killed Preston a little bit. John, it's just me and you now. Uh, <laughs> uh, anybody, this, this is a clusterfuck already. Uh, Great. Uh, but anyways, welcome. Hello. Hi, YouTube land. Yes, I am not dead. For those of you who small fast Spaz Phoenix who used to follow me, yes, I have returned to YouTube. 619 Apocalypse is my new channel. So if you want to, go subscribe. Not going to force you to. But um, yeah, this is a collab, if you can't tell. And uh, so yeah, we're going to have some fun. Yes, and the topic of the day, the topic that most people are ranting about is the release of Abraham Washington... A.W. Jesse, whatever his real name is, over the Kobe Bryant jokes. General thoughts on his release, guys. Uh, well, you know, if you want my general thoughts, you know, you could check out, you know, Twelve Hours. I really expanded on it there. I mean, I said, look, it's disappointing because I hated the guy when he hosted the Abraham Washington show on ECW, but you know, he came back as a manager and he really started to grow on me. You know, I really liked what he was doing with the primetime players. And, you know, I thought it was entertaining. I'm going to get over it, you know, uh, you know. but I like the primetime players. I hope they're not affected too much. And that's all I really can say about that. Preston? Um, I'm not an Abraham Washington fan. I do think it's bullshit he got fired. That's all I got to say about it. See, my thing is, and I got into conversations with other people earlier today, and it's like, well, I don't really care about Abraham Washington getting fired. I wasn't a fan of his anyways. And... See, when I start talking about something like this, and it'll sound a lot like the Jericho thing, it's sort of beyond, you know, whether you like him or not, sort of beyond, okay, well, you know, well, he was just a jobber anyway. It's, an, it's a result of sort of, you don't screw anybody. It's not that, you know, this is okay for this guy because he's a main eventer, and this is not okay for this guy because he's a jobber, so we can afford to let him go. Um... What do you guys think, as, as far as the whole, well, you know, he wasn't really any special, so it's okay to screw him? Well, that, I, hey, that. you know, here's my thing, you know what, welcome to wrestling. It's true. Let <laughs> I me mean, just put it to you that way. Welcome to the business of getting fucked. Welcome so, to the business of getting fucked. Abraham Washington just went from a superstar to a prostitute. That's amazing. Only in WWE, folks. I mean, look. My thing is, it does set a bad precedent for these guys. You know, do you want to go out and be a star? Do you want to go out and play it safe? And Abraham Washington's termination may suggest, yeah, playing it safe is the better bet. You know, it, it's a shame because, again, it says, do politics win out? You know, is it just the cream of the crop that's going to be served to, well, these guys have to scratch and claw and sometimes, you know, just still not get anything for it? Yeah, it's really sad because again, he was starting to turn a corner with me. I hated him when he hosted the Abraham Washington show. He started to grow on me here, and the idea that he made a comment. I think what was worse wasn't even the fact that it was, uh, you know, about a rape that he didn't get convicted for. I think the real controversy for me it was referencing Colorado, which was still in the wake of the movie theater shooting, which that really didn't help his case much either. So, pretty much double shot himself in the foot. I would have fined him at best. You can find people for smoking synthetic marijuana an actual substance abuse, I think you could find a guy for a comment and have him offer a public apology. Um, termination, I think, was definitely wrongful. Uh, and again, I, I just think it really sends a very bitter and negative message to the back, to the lower crust, of saying, you know what, guys, we need to keep these paychecks moving and stuff like that. And, and this is the first time the lower crust has been hit. Also, I remember Spaz, the controversy coming out recently with JTG, talking about the low WrestleMania pays. So it, it's not really looking good for these guys. It's not, and it's unfortunate because he's a heel, first of all, but, you know, WWE, pro wrestling in general, is a business or a, or a profession or whatever you want to call it, where you succeed based on how well you can stick out, and it seems right now that a lot of the people that are trying to stick out are getting their hand bitten off for it. 
kind of sort of thing. I mean, to Preston's point, this is a man's business. Uh, you know, this isn't a boy's game. You know, we see a lot of guys. When you come in here, you better have some idea of where you want to go. The problem is A.W. did have an idea where he wanted to go. This wasn't a guy who didn't take it, you know, lightly. You know, he took it very seriously, and he was doing his job, just like Daniel Bryan when he hilariously choked us <laughs> <Justin laughs> the time. Sure. That was That, that is hilarious. one of the funniest things I've ever but seen. I didn't hear that story um, so long afterwards, and I just laughed because by that point he was already back. Right. And, and you know, my, my thing is, A.W. did take his job seriously. He was doing something great with a tag team that a lot of people crapped on. I know, Preston, you still crap on. You asked me consistently, what do people see in the primetime players? Right. But, you know, they, um, I, I feel like, you know, hopefully like, they'll be all right. And, and, to, and to defend my point, I think the primetime players are one of the worst tag teams I have ever seen. And I'm not shitting you on that fact either. I don't understand why people are so high on this tag team. I see really nothing in them. The hell, they remind me of MVP, but they're like a hundred times worse. Like I, I just, just primetime players making that money. No, thank you. Not in my millions wrestling. of dollars, millions uh, of dollars, yeah. millions of dollars. <laughs> yeah, uh, exactly. See, the thing with the primetime players is, I, I am a fan of the primetime. They're just fun to watch. They're goofy. I think they're hilarious more than anything else. But. That alone didn't get them very far. They got a lot of their personality from AW. So the only ones that are really going to suffer in the long run, other than, you know, AW and his family, etc., is primetime players. Are they going to lose all the momentum? Because they didn't exactly have the mic skills. It's a great question. I don't know. And that's the, that's the problem. I mean, you know, Titus O'Neil, when he turned heel on NXT... Michael Cole was like, it's been something, you know, amount of weeks, and he still can't cut a promo. And that really hasn't changed, you know, since joining forces with Darren Young. Darren Young, I do see something. I do think his funniest promo was like, wait, Darren, I'm going to show you. I wasn't the weak link. I was the missing link. And then he eats an RKO. Darren Young, you see, when Jesus <laughs> uh, stays you out in the sun too long. But anyways, let's get exactly. the I, I, potatoes of this video. Basically... You know, WWE would have you believe that AW got fired for being offensive, which, you know, I'm not going to deny. There's quite legitimate possibility that what he said about the whole Kobe Bryant thing could offend a hell of a lot of people. I don't think anybody in this conversation is going to deny that. But what I do have here, and I was in fear at one point that I was going to be doing this video by myself, what I have in front of me on the Doomy clipboard of Doom is 26 things in no particular order, that the WWE has done that could have potentially, you know, tight air quotes, as John would say, offended people a hell of a lot more. I'm really glad I don't have to do this by myself. I'm really glad I have you guys along for the ride. And uh, is there anything else that anybody else wants to toss on this uh, pile of shit before we get onto the list? No. No, let's, uh, let's kill it. All right, number one, and I didn't know this until it became an issue this week. But apparently, Mike Tyson was convicted of rape several years ago, which I wasn't aware of, because I don't follow many other sports other than WWE. So you have a guy that's made one joke about an alleged rapist, and he's been fired. A guy that's been actually convicted of rape got a WrestleMania main event and a Hall of Fame induction. Anybody want to take this one? <laughs> um, that is kind of fucked up. But I'm going to kind of put it this way, and I'm not defending it. It was a long time ago. Hell, it was before I was even fucking born. So, it's over 20 years ago. Um, I understand, but... <sighs> WrestleMania 14 was in 97. This year's Hall of Fame was in 2012. Like, there's a big time difference. Again, I'm not defending it. I'm just saying, you know, there's a time. Oh, I'm, just, you know, I'm people, just saying. I'm just saying. I'm only bringing it up for the for the potential. Well, yeah, exactly. That's right. I mean, exactly. If you fucking rape somebody, that's bullshit. You know, it's it's that's 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 heinous. The idea but, of this list is how but, much potential it has to offend somebody. Because you yeah, there are people yeah, out that there look to be offended yeah, by everything. People are out there. They look I don't, to be offended. They look for reasons to be offended. They look for reasons to be butthurt. And that's the, 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 the lens that we're looking at this list through. Right. John? Um, I guess just to kind of take the ball here, uh, 
you know, for me, I could forgive the WrestleMania main event because it's whatever. It's the Attitude Era. They knew they wanted to make an impact, and Mike Tyson's name was still prestigious. The WrestleMania main event, I have a problem with. Again, that was in 97. It's whatever. I mean, you know, we were on the cusp of the greatness known as Stone Cold Steve Austin. I don't really care about that. My problem is the Hall of Fame induction because that was during the PG era, and that's what I think we're really dissecting here, Stats, because we're looking at a product that has sensitized itself, that has donned a PG banner, and then they commit an action like this under that banner. I mean, rape is rape, and we're not talking about the crime here. And let people know, that it's not the crime in question here. It's, it's the consequences of the crime with this company that are in question. And when you're a PG product and you give this man a Hall of Fame ring and a speech, you know, he's speaking to the public. You know, he's you know, not just giving this to him in quiet, you know, showing him along. I wish I would have, I wish I would have known this because I did not know Mike Tyson's criminal record to that degree. I would have brought that up in my Chris Benoit deserves a Hall of Fame ring video, my first video on vocal aggression. Right. Um, no, you know, it's just another example is, of how the just, whole. Of sorry, go ahead. <laughs> no, I was just gonna say, you know, that just proves that the Hall of Fame is, isn't as black and white as WWE would like you, you know, to think that it is. And I think, you know, when a man gets awarded a Hall of Fame ring. You know, with, with that kind of a criminal record, not even a question. When you know people could probably look it up and find it out, and then that could be used against WWE, and they, and they should really know that. And, you know, on the other hand, AW makes a comment about a situation where a man wasn't even convicted. It was an offhanded comment that Michael Cole and AW on multiple occasions apologized for. Again, I would have slapped a fine on AW, and we could have gone on our merry way, but he gets handed a pink slip, and I'm sorry. Looking at it in that context, it is wrong. Right. And I think you just summed up exactly what I want the rest of this conversation to be. It's like, if you're going to, WWE as a whole, like I'm looking at WWE as a whole, if you're going to fire this guy for doing this, look at what you've done. So number two, and we're talking potential for offense, Owen Hart passes away at a pay-per-view, the show continues. Oh, okay. Ooh. <laughs> the, that was, uh, uh, you know what, can I, can I jump in? Um, or no, Preston, you're going to have it. Yeah, Preston. John, go. This wasn't wrong. I, I won't hold this against WWE. That is probably what a wrestling great like Owen Hart would have wanted. Same way that they had a wrestling show, you know, the night that he died. It wasn't just clips like when Chris Benoit died, which I thought was kind of weird. Um, you know, they still had a wrestling show for Eddie. I honestly wish they would have had a wrestling show for Chris. I didn't like that it was a clip show. And then, of course, we're never going to get another tribute again because of the circumstances. This was not wrong by WWE. I'm sorry. People can hate me. I think they did the right thing. I think they did the tasteful thing. I think they did the respectful thing. It was a tough situation. You paid for a pay-per-view. Um, and, you know, yeah, people were offended. But you know what? You paid money. See, me as a consumer, and maybe this is just me being cold. Me as a consumer, I expect a pay-per-view. This is a travesty. But I think you would have caused more of an outcry if, if you spent money and you didn't even get a full show, then not even a full show. And then you do the memorial, which was an amazing memorial from the clips that I saw, you know, the night after. I think they handled it the best way that they could. I'm sorry. Me personally, I'm not faulting them to be for this. No, it's uh, with, the, with this one, and the reason I bring it up is there's going to be a 50-50 there's going to be people that would have shit on them if they had stopped, and there's going to be people that shit on them for keeping on going. I just think with, with, with the decision with the decision that, that is that divisive, you had, you know, whatever that 40, 50 percent of the crowd that would have wanted you to stop getting very, very offended and a lot more seriously offended than a simple comment from AW. Right. And I completely agree with that. Preston? Um, I really, really don't know what to say. Um, I really got nothing to say. Okay, no, Alright, you got nothing to say on that one? Okay, this one will be a bit easier. Yeah. It's let, me just, uh, I'll, let me just tag on something real quick, Spaz. Sure. I just want to reiterate to everybody, in comparison to, a in comparison to AW, this was indeed far more offensive, but looking at the situation by itself, I'm sorry, I can't fault WWE. So I just want to make that perfectly clear. Right. This is about AW and, and the comparisons between this list and AW's action. In comparison, this was worse, but on its own, I'm I'm not mad, I'm not angry or anything. I, I can't fault them for it, so that's just me. I'm glad you put it that way. You can see how people would have been offended. It just so happens that you weren't. I love it. Okay, next one is a little bit more, exactly. a little more cut and dry for uh, potentially being offended. Big Show versus the Big Boss Man. Back in the Attitude Era where B Big Boss Man went and visited Big Show's mom 
found out that Big Show was married, or sorry, was conceived out of wedlock, the next, you know, few weeks revolves around calling Big Show a bastard, and then Big Show visiting the cemetery where Big Show, er, sorry, Big Boss Man visiting the cemetery where Big Show's dad was killed, and having the casket and the tombstone pulled away by the cop car and riding on the casket. Yeah, this is bullshit. <laughs> Um, I, this is, in my opinion, one of the most offensive things that, you know, WWE's ever done. Um, yeah, I, I mean, I mean, th- this is insanely offensive. Um, you know, it's, is it one of the most shocking, shocking moments ever? Yes, but at the same time, it's insane. Like, I understand it wasn't real, but fuck it. It's, you, you know, I, it's one of my favorite clips ever in, uh, Vince's documentary. You know, you write the storyline, you can unwrite the storyline. This was not needed, in my opinion. Just overdone crap. To the point where they made a Big Show shirt that said, Big Nasty Bastard. Yeah. John? Wow. I guess to take the tag here, uh, to steal a phrase from New Spaz, in comparison to A.W., definitely far worse, even standing on its own. This is offensive. I actually remember owning the tape Armageddon from, what was the year, Preston? 98 was yep, this man? Yeah, 98. Uh, Triple H from Street Fighter. Yeah, it was also where I got my first experience in Unity. Oh, the glories of being a wrestling fan, folks, indeed. <laughs> um, and, you know, Big, Big Show did get the payoff, which was, he killed Boss Man and Albert. Actually, it's one of my favorite Big Show matches because he was just, he did a kip-up. Like, you'll never see that in Big Show in 2012. And on this tape, he does a kip up, and he raises the hand, and he chokes slams Boss Man to hell. So I think the only reason I could forgive this is uh, because Big Show got his payoff. I could have forgiven Katie Vick if came to become a world champion because of this, but he didn't. So I'm just like, no, this just all fucking sucks all together. Um, but Big Show gets his payoff. I'm still on so what jump. they did. Didn't they even feed? <laughs> Beg pardon? I'm sorry. No, you Say that again? start mentioning random references, and it seems every time uh, every time you and I do a collab, you end up jumping ahead topics to uh, topics that I have waiting for later on. But uh, anyway, it's yours. Yeah, we we will. I'm, I'm sure we will get. To I know that's on there. there. There's no way in hell it isn't. Exactly. Um, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I I wholeheartedly agree with Preston. This this was just disgusting. There was a much better way to get personal without going to that level. If you want a perfect example of getting personal without getting distasteful, look at Shawn Michaels' Triple H. Hell yeah. Perfectly done. Um, so, Ray, you know, I, de- I definitely sign Ray, on to Ray Eddie. Eddie. Ray Eddie is a fine line. That's a good one. Because it got personal, but it was the right kind of personal. This was just wrong. Ray Eddie, I actually didn't yeah, put on this I list. Totally I totally found personal. Have... Just so... Ray Eddie, I could have put on this list because while it worked, it did have the same potential to offend a lot of people, because there are a lot of people that are in custody battles, end up on Jerry Springer or more. I just dis- I disagree with that, but yeah. that's my Eddie's name. bedtime stories. <laughs> oh, oh shit! Somebody somewhere out there, like I say, that's looking for a reason to get offended, might have been offended by that, or at least tried to put themselves across as being offended by that. Anyways, next. Right. Vince McMahon has Trish Stratus stripped down to her bra and underwear and act like a doll <laughs> to keep her job. Oh my god. This almost has Big Show. Okay, when they did this, this was Paul Heyman's first night on Raw, by the way, because... Oh yeah, I'm gonna see Bush! <laughs> Good one. One of the um, Paul Heyman quotes ever. My first time in Washington, I'm going to see Bush. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God damn, I love Paul Heyman. Um, this is just offensive to women, offensive to everybody, just plain damn offensive. Like, just, Vince, what the fuck are you doing, you dumb son of a bitch? Like, <laughs> bark like a dog. What? Like, Treating women like dogs? Like, come on! Like, why? Just, just, why? Stupid. I don't know what I gotta say about it. Alright, ball goes to John. I, I think, I think the more interesting dialogue 
Um, I think the more interesting dialogue that's really occurring here, Spaz, because of your list and not necessarily AW, because AW's firing wasn't a part of storyline. I mean, it really happened because of an automated comment, trying to be in character, trying to be entertaining. But when we're looking at your list, I, I think it brings up an interesting discussion of what is offensive. Is it offensive when the person in question doesn't get the payoff, or is it just offensive, period? Because remember, Trish would slap Vince McMahon at WrestleMania 17. She would just start losing my Vince to Shane. And, well, I was... I love, I see where you're going with this shit. Stop focusing on what the payoff is. Because that is, in my opinion, clouding your judgment on these things. But I, I have to look at that. For, for me, I have to look at that because... Why? I, I'm going to say... Let, let, me, let me finish. Let me finish. Let, let me finish. Uh, thank you. Um, no, in comparison to AW, definitely more offensive, again, but alone... One, maybe because I'm a Trish Stratus Mark, and I loved her getting a fan off. I was a Trish Mark growing up. And to see her, you know, give Vince so, some so space and stuff minute, like that. Wait a minute. They get a pay yeah, That's off, awesome. So it's not offensive? That's fucking stupid. No, it's, 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 still, it's still offensive, but is it as offensive as it could have been if they didn't get the payoff? That's my question to everybody. Like, that's what I want people's opinions on. Because to me, yeah, it's still offensive. I'm not saying, oh, it's all right. But is it as offensive as it could have been had they not gotten the payoff? Had Trish kept getting degraded, degraded, degraded? And ultimately, you know, get treated like in shit. My, in my opinion, you know, it's pay, going to be payoff doesn't matter because if well, like, but see, here's the thing, soul, Ryan Eddie. I, if we're just looking at the soul thing that is offensive, that's all. Like the payoff is not a part of this. Well, uh, Preston, I'll tell you why payoff matters to me because if say Ray and Eddie, their big ladder match for the custody of Dominic, if Eddie had won, I would have considered it offensive, <laughs> and that was the big final match. That's my thing. Since Ray won, and he got to keep custody of his kid over this heel that, you know, Eddie was detached from any kind of an ethical reality, you know, to me, it's like, okay, this stayed in the realm of good. Had Eddie, who even during the match kind of implied that he was going to hit Dominic, won the match, I'm like, yeah, that, that is offensive. So when I think of a storyline like that, these acts still are offensive. I'm saying, you know, how offensive are they in question? Not only to AW, but by themselves, considering everything. And that's my thing. Barking like a dog and crawling, that's that is very demeaning, and you see a lot of politicians go after Linda because of that. I just think, you know, again, just thankfully, WWE, you know, averted a really bad turn. Trish got her payoff, and again, in comparison to AW, uh, yeah, definitely awful. And see, here's my thing, John, and here's where I, hopefully, and you guys can tell me if I haven't, I've been very careful to say, not to say, sorry, point blank, what is offensive and what's not offensive, and I'm very, very much speaking in terms of looking at a specific moment, and this is why I get where Preston's coming from, because I'm sort of looking at the specific moments as they happen and thinking sort of how in that particular moment, not knowing what the payoff is, somebody that's not familiar with the product, how likely is it that they will be offended in that moment? Exactly. And this is why, that, I'm, that, that this is is why I'm comparing them to the AW conversation, because I had to go back, honestly, when this started becoming a big deal, and listen to AW's commentary again, because the comment that he got fired for, I missed entirely. So in the moment, there's a hell of a lot more, uh, there's a hell of a lot more offense, potentially, in that entire Vince McMahon, Trish Stratus scene, than one offhand comment that, to be honest, I didn't even hear the first time it was said. I didn't hear it either, for the record. I think I should let that be known. I didn't even hear him make um, Really, fired. they put attention on themselves. Fired. I just heard Colorado Hotel Room. That's it. I didn't even hear Kobe Bryant or anything like that. Yeah. Anyways, on to the next potentially, uh, potentially offensive thing that WWE has done. Started off really, really good. Ended up being really, really bad. The hiring of Zach Gowan. And I applaud... Let me get this out there before anybody says anything. I applaud... WWE for hiring somebody differently abled, showing, you know, going out, showing the world, hey, people that are differently abled can still get the shit done. You know, they're not lepers. They're not left out at the side. You know, they are a part of the community. They're going to be part of the WWE. But you knew the guy was going to be like the biggest baby face with the most sympathy ever. So eventually that was going to lead to heels coming and nagging at him for what he was. And the potential for offense or for people to be offended by that is a landslide. I was a Zach Gowan fan. So was I. So, and and here's the thing. I'm going to just go to the Brock Lesnar stuff, because that's really all we need to go to, in my opinion. Well, Vince, too. 
Vince and Brock are the two people I want to focus on, since that's who we're talking about here. The, the whole thing with Vince, you know, making fun of Zack and all that shit, that was not right. And then Brock Lesnar breaking Zack Allen's leg. Fucked up. Like, seriously fucked up. And then, you know, he did the whole thing with his mom and wife and just fucked up! <laughs> That's all it is, and I know John's gonna have some funny shit to say about this. Possibly, actually, no. We're we're gonna we're gonna skip that part because okay. I, okay. I really don't I really don't want to bring that back. That was really between you and I. All right, there uh, we go. Um, but in my opinion, all the shit they did with that gallon in that realm was fucked up. So yeah, it's way more offensive than AW in my opinion. So yeah. John, see again, and and I know people aren't gonna like it, but in this court, um. You know, again, I, I, yeah, I heard the sigh again. I don't like how he got sent off. That's what I really think made it offensive. You got Brock Lesnar tormenting the kid in a wheelchair. I mean, that that's just really romanticizing the disability for the sake of a storyline. That is sick. Um, you know, I didn't like that at all. The, the guy had a chance to actually be a sensation. His match with Vince McMahon at Vengeance, the crowd really seemed behind him, and he busted. I mean, Vince really cut himself deep. He seemed to be doing good things. It was an inspirational story. He even, you know, got a little rub from Hulk Hogan, who at the time was having the persona of Mr. America. But, you know, then again, we go to how things end, which I have to. And this guy, in a wheelchair, damaged after his leg got f 5 into a ring post. I'm not going to say anything other than that. Uh, you know, really gets decimated by this monster. It's, you know, normally, and, and that's why I can forgive WWE for some of the questionable things they do, like Randy, like other storylines, because the good guy comes out on top. The, the big thing here is the good guy did it. The good guy got thrown down a flight of stairs. This was, and this was hypocritical for WWE's message because, you know, they like to say, especially now in a PG era, the good guy overcomes whatever. Uh, that didn't happen here because <laughs> if, if, if the good guy overcoming is pretty much flying in a quote-unquote magical chair as deemed by Brock Lesnar <laughs> down a flight of stairs, which was hilarious. I'm sorry it was. <laughs> Just like the ring post, there I said it. It was hilarious. It was still offensive. Was, the fucking shit with Brock was hilarious. I agree. <laughs> <laughs> they, you know, great stuff. But still, we need to look at. In essence, it was hypocritical by WWE because they like to send out a message: the good guy wins. I mean, long heel reigns end at the hands of a babyface. A babyface can get cheated, but they ultimately get their comeuppance. Zach didn't hear. I mean, maybe if he had beaten Brock Lesnar, and again, that's why I'm looking at things the way I'm looking at them. Okay, John, I, I have a question for you. Yeah, so are, yeah. are, are all of these moments going to be based on if the good guy wins? Because if that's the case... Not necessarily, because again, uh, you know, there are going to be something... I mean, Katie Vick, again, I, I probably could have spoiled it better. Because I, I'm, I'm going to say, I don't feel like you're... I mean, some of these, I don't feel like you're like fully getting into it and like unloading on some of them. Like You're just kind of like glancing. Yeah. yeah, and I, I've got I've gotten that elsewhere as well. Look, I'm just saying it like I see it. And again, keeping the focus on AW, like Alex said, which I agree with, you know, this was, again, more offensive. I just like to look at it by itself and then bring it back. Because when you look at this, AW says a comment, and that should be said here. Spaz made a list, and these are of moments. These are of physical happenings. This was a man saying a statement. That I think that really needs to be emphasized. This was a statement on a live mic that, Preston, you admitted you didn't even fully pick up. Right. Spaz, you admitted you didn't even fully pick up. Exactly. I admitted I didn't even fully pick up. How many other people didn't even fully pick up? And even if we did, it's a statement. This is not somebody eating humans, giving birth to a hand, you, you know, a guy getting thrown in the place. Forgot about physical, that you know, and, and that's just it. These are physical actions that took place, and it's hypocritical of WWE, and I will say it, because Alex keeps thinking, oh, John's not coming out and saying it. Well, here it is. You know, WWE is hypocritical of all these actions take place, physical actions, and a man makes a statement, which is invisible, like air, and he gets fired. But don't judge me and don't cast aside me because I look at the whole payoff and say whether I think it's offensive or not, because you're right, it is hypocritical. But whether I think it is or not on a personal level, that's my business. I'm not apologizing for it. So, And here's, you know, and here's one point that I was hoping to make eventually, and John, you've kind of opened the door, so I'm going to do it. It was one comment. It was one off-the-cup remark that I guarantee you wasn't scripted by anybody. The things that we're talking about are well and deeply involved scenes and skits and matches and, you know, segments that were scripted by a writing team, by a creative team, and they were somehow or other okayed by Vince McMahon or whoever Vince McMahon's underlings are. So these all got through, but the one off-the-cuff comment is the one that gets AW fired. That's that's the that's the land. And that is a problem. And like Alex said, and I said it at the start, 
he apologized for it. Michael Cole apologized for it. Again, me personally, and I've said it multiple times, definitely not a termination. At the very least, if I really wanted to drive the message home, a fine. You're telling me a guy can smoke synthetic marijuana, physically abuse himself, when you know WWE's history with substance abuse and the things that have been brought forward with that. A man could get synthetic marijuana and only get fined. A man makes a statement, he gets terminated. Definite hypocrisy going on here. Yeah. Absolutely definite hypocrisy. But I'm just saying for me, and Preston asked the question, is it always going to come down to when the good guy wins? Not necessarily, Preston, but I mention that because you know, especially in this day and age when it's marketed towards children, I think that's pretty important. Because if a Zad Gowan, say a few weeks after he got thrown on a flight of stairs, if he beat Brock Lesnar in a match, that would have been fucking huge. And really, you were a fan of Zach Gowan, and so was I, and we were young then. Would you really have thought about how offensive him getting thrown down a flight of stairs was? Maybe you wouldn't have, but then you would have thought, oh my god, he beat Brock Lesnar. I have thought about it, he, but it wouldn't change the fact that it was in... It happened. Okay. Exactly. And, and that's what I'm saying. I just want to make sure we got the concrete base going here, so right. we're not, you know, sloppy. Yeah, no, a- absolutely, absolutely. But I just want everybody to understand my position, because I can tell right. like, people are coming at me from all sides, and I want, you know, I'm with you guys on this. It's just, I'm looking at it differently and i think that's what makes this collab so great we've got different perspectives here so spaz i'm really sorry for that diatribe please retake the reins okay. we, 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 we veer off course every time we collaborate so i mean you and i do it <laughs> preston and i do it it is the joy of collaborating on youtube where i have an unlimited recorder anyways the next one that is on my poten- list of wwe's potentially offensive actions the billy and chuck wedding oh I'm going to say no on this one. Good, because I'm right there with you, dude. Okay, you guys weren't offended by it. And and this is where I try to take it out to the public in general. Now, keep in mind that there is a LGBT community to consider who don't want their marital, you know, services or whatever made a mockery. Spaz, can I request one thing of you? Sure. I really don't want to get into gay marriage on this video, so let's make this one short and sweet. Okay, no, 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 that's fine. I'm just saying, okay. leave the door open for the, you know, gay, lesbian, bisexual community. Right. There may be people out there that looked at this as a mockery of their marriage rights and whatever. And on the other side of the coin, there are hyper-religious people that think that, you know, certain people shouldn't be able to get married. Who could? So you've got two very large groups of, like, public interest groups that could have come down on WWE for this. A lot more than AW. <laughs> you know what's so funny about this, Spaz? And I don't want to speak for Preston, but Preston, maybe you felt the same way I did. I was really young when this happened, so I didn't even realize the significance of this moment. Here's the thing. I never saw this until the SmackDown DVD. <laughs> there, there's, there's, there's how I, I, I never saw this moment until they did the uh, the big 10-year uh, anniversary, big three-disc set SmackDown DVD that I owned. That was the first time I ever saw it. So, yeah. Oh, I loved it. I was a fan of the team. I'm a fan of Bischoff and Three Minute Warning and all that, and I thought it was all great. I thought this segment was done fantastically for comical value and, like John's saying, for like where it went after this. I'm just saying, there are if you want to talk about WWE worrying about their you know public opinion, and right? How many people could have been offended by this? You've got you know sort of LGBT rights groups on one side, and you've got religious groups on the other side, both of whom could have taken tremendous issue with this segment. Right, and and my, my and my personal ideology about gay marriage aside, which I really think I should really be as objective as possible, this was still more offensive than AW. But I will admit, in comparison to the other things we've talked about on this list, not by much in my personal opinion, but still yes. Yeah, I didn't find it offensive either. The potential for certain people that are more radical about their opinions is definitely there. Is where I was going with this one. Right, I agree. Right. Uh, anybody have anything else to say about that? No. No, um, let's move on. Slight little branch off of that, uh, and this is a very, very minor thing, but again, I'm talking about the fringe out there that will get offended about anything. There are super religious people out there that think no wedding should happen in wrestling because they're always made a mockery of. <laughs> I'm sorry, I gotta laugh at that shit. You're mocking the sanctity of marriage. Blah, 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 blah. People? It's wrestling? wrestling i know religion needs to take the rod out of its ass exactly. there i said it i said it exactly. I, I, I said it i'm sorry i, I really tried to no, refrain it i really no, did no no no, no you're good and you're good and guys i bring you here because i want your opinions 
But if you you want it uncensored, right? Yeah, religion needs to take the rod out of its ass. Yeah, Fucking absolutely, serious, yeah. absolutely. And I'm not. I mean, you're telling me you're telling me with all the priests that get convicted with molestation charges, you're seriously going to be upset that a marriage happens on TV? <laughs> Fuck yourself. Yeah. Oh, here we go. Man, maybe maybe you should get the 66 year olds. Anything on this list? I'm not saying that the people that are offended by it would be right to be offended. I'm just saying they're there, and they could cause a bigger stink than AW. <laughs> and yes, I'm going to keep driving it home. It's bigger than AW because that's my yes. entire point of doing this video. That's right. that's the core the potential the, the core fact that the religious community could bring if they wanted to. Can do a lot. More. Okay, come on, Alex. The priest getting fucking tombstone was fucking awesome. I'm sorry. That was hilarious. <laughs> that was awesome. Maybe maybe There's it's because of being I... a priest and his face basically melting off. <laughs> oh, fucking uh, awesome. McMahon spitting out whole. McMahon spitting out holy water like Triple H. Like Triple H. <laughs> okay, and here's one. And you know what? <laughs> Preston has said it. John has said it. I've said it. So we might as well get it out of the way. Katie Vick. Yeah. Somebody so, go with this one. Okay. Preston, you go. It's Triple H fucking a corpse. Do I even need to say anything else? And see, I wasn't even going that far. I wasn't even going directly to the cemetery scene. I'm talking about the story... From when when Triple H, yeah, okay, you know, when Triple H made the initial accusation, the fact, right. not not anything that actually happened, the fact that this that became a storyline, the fact that this was ever written, yeah. is is offensive, and I exactly. think anybody can agree on that. I, I'm 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 so glad you said that, Spez, because my big point was gonna be, oh no, you know, th there are some. Well, here we go, <laughs> right? Um, my my big point is, with something like this. It's not something, first of all, it didn't happen on a SmackDown, so you couldn't re-record it. I mean, this was live television. Second of all, the gravity of what you're doing here, you can't sweep under the rug and you can't change course. Once you pick that course, you've got to finish it, and that's where it gets really awkward. Because Triple H comes out after Kane successfully defends the tag titles after Hurricane was ambushed in that legendary TLC match, which was epic. Uh, and he says, Kane, you are a murderer. And then everybody collectively goes, oh. Because Kane was beast when he came back, and I'm like, oh, yeah, Triple H feud, yeah, go kick ass. And then Kane's a murderer, and apparently he went to parties. When when he came in, we heard that he was institutionalized. So what what kind of life did Kane have? <laughs> yeah, like, <laughs> institutionalized party sex. <laughs> hey, well, hey, hey, Katie, what are you in for? I'm bipolar. Great, I'm insane with burn wounds. <laughs> This and happened. I'm sorry, but it just got weirder and weirder and weirder it really and did. weirder. It really did. And you know what the funny thing is? And I'm not, and I'm trying to deviate from the point here. Really, I'm not. But what's so funny is when you look back at clips in the storyline, people, I think, have more issue with the idea that Kane's character wasn't consistent than with the idea that it was an imaginary <laughs> character. Are you me? No, seriously. Oh, it's Preston, true. I've seen people do it. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's true, Preston. If you look at comments, they're like, man, that makes no sense. Kane came in from an asylum. I'm like, that's really the issue here. That's really the thing. Not, not the Triple H. And he's awesome. Trip. We're going to overlook the necrophilia. Not, 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 not the Triple H pretended to fuck a corpse and fucked your brains out, which is hilarious in oh my, my God. Th this is single-handedly the most offensive thing WWE has ever done in my eyes, and they should be ashamed of themselves every day going forward that this even happens. Oh, my God. And the idea that a man gets terminated again, and this is a point that I'm going to drive home fast. Yeah, yeah, I agree, yeah. The man makes a statement. This is a physical storyline, and that's the thing. Some of these things on this list aren't even moments. They're full-fledged storylines that go time. from it one point There were people in the back. See, here's the thing. Friggin' AW's comment, again, I'm gonna say it, was off the cuff. All the things we're talking about, there were people spending time and days and getting paychecks to write this stuff. There, there was thought, there was a cerebral process, it was premeditated. There was I approval. Just picture, I, there was approval. I could just picture WWE headquarters. Okay, we've had Triple H make the accusation that came to murder. Where do we go? Vince, I, I really think we should abort it. We still have time. We can sweep this under the rug. Oh, you no, have a family? You yes, three kids. Portion, did you? <laughs> oh god, I don't, I don't get come later, I guess. Oh dear. But uh, they're like, you know, we we can still we can still fix this. Do you have a family? Yes, three kids. You're fired. All right, now how can we make this more offensive? <laughs> it's, just, it's crazy to me. <sighs> we find out that Zach Gowen is really Kane's long lost twin brother. Oh, that would have been awesome. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, do we need to say anything else about the Katie Vick thing? No, it, it's single-handedly the most disgusting thing WWE ever did. If there's any point of their hypocrisy, uh, it, it's this right here. 
and really the idea that AW got terminated over a statement when this storyline exists. You can find it on YouTube. You can find it if you look hard enough. I just is want to disgusting. walk to the WWE headquarters and find the people that actually made the decision who actually handed over the pink slip, show them like a still shot from the Katie Vick storyline and be like, this happened. Yeah, exactly. Anyway. Like, AW got fired, but remember, be a star. This happened. Go <laughs> <laughs> be a star rally and show those kids those photos. <laughs> don't, like, you know, here, here's don't. their new slogan, and they'll have Kane be the spokesperson. Don't bone a bully, bone a corpse. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe we just so went there. Go. when it goes up. Anyway, I'm losing my voice, too. That's horrible, and we're not even near halfway done. Okay, this one's not nearly as destructive as the case of Victor. destructive like eric that. bischoff becomes the general manager of raw what does he what does he try to sell raw based on three little letters tna l l a hot what? lesbian action oh you, you remember that the two rich no. chicks that nobody knows make out in the ring for a couple of minutes and that was the main event of raw fuck yeah Okay, <laughs> in terms of... So, so wait, <laughs> me, me, me looking at the payoffs of storylines is horrible, but that statement is... We're going to let that fly. We're going to let that go. <laughs> Fuck your face, dude. Continue. Eric, <laughs> oh, I will not like. here or there. I will not do her anywhere. Yes, I will. <laughs> but no, as much as, yes, I'm with Preston, I'm going to look at this like I'm going to look at Sonny's painted on bikini and say, hell yeah. But the potential <laughs> for people to be offended, mostly feminists and people that are annoying like that, yes, I said it, is there. Do you want me to? Do you want me to take the rain spaz so you can collect yourself? Yes. <laughs> I, I mean, I mean, the one guy that's really been, you know, coming out of all directions. I'll, I'll kind of take the reins here. What really bothers me about this, especially, you know, growing into the kind of person that I have with my certain set of, you know, codes and ideals. First off. Again, it's celebrating lesbianism, but but if it's it, it's two men, oh, that's just horrid. This out of the other, but two women, man, that's hot. Let's you know see more of that. So and look, look, I'm not you sure, know, trying to that before. You know, I can't remember what comedian said it, but you know, I can you know you know if you go up to two politicians and, and say you know lesbian, okay, men, nah, you know that's, that's yeah, and bullshit. It's, it's, it's that it's, double standard, and that's what we're looking at here. That's what we're looking at here is the double standards and the hypocrisy by one company exactly. and, and one society that embraces this company, and, and a man loses his dream job for it, as uh, Alex put it. Uh, and, you know, to me, first of all, it kind of glorifies one act while completely still demeaning the other on the sidelines. So, again, double standard. Men assaulted these women, which I didn't even even know. I forgot totally about that part. The only thing I remember with these women was their altercation with Spike Dudley that made him spit his water. Um, forgot that three minute warning actually attacked these people. So that's also worse, uh, you know, cause it's women being attacked. I mean, you know, it's, it's bad enough. They have one barking around like a dog. Now women are physically being assaulted and I'm amazed that 40% of the viewing audience in this day and age is women. Uh, this was incredibly bad. That happens. I honestly don't. The girls that have, uh, stuck it out with us, they deserve a medal. <laughs> Indeed they do. They re- Indeed they do. People like Jamie, people like Kara, people like Angela. I hope you guys are all listening to this. People, uh, the girls from Black Cat Feline, uh, Heather from uh, Nutty Rock Chick, they deserve a medal for sticking it out with us because they really do get the short end of the stick. Yeah. They, they do. They do. And I mean, it, it's gotten better, I think, in some ways in 2012, obviously, compared to where we were. But, I mean, still, you know, still not the best place to be. And, and yeah. this was certainly no exception this was just heinous this was disgusting and uh, you know maybe maybe aw will see this video so he'll have new firing material at wwe so I'll, I'll go on his payroll to go against wwe just for the hell of it i'll be his exactly. counsel just to be in the same courtroom as vince mcmahon so vince is it true that you had lesbians get attacked by a tag team formerly known as Steven <laughs> Orton? <laughs> preston's going to be <laughs> Oh dear, this video's gone to hell. Going, going, and this video's gone, and it's gone. <laughs> Today on the People's Court. Okay, do we have anything else to say about HLA before Preston goes into? He was cutting, dude, dude, he was, dude, he was cutting his People's Court promo. You don't interrupt a man when he's cutting his People's Court <laughs> promo. Man, what the hell? <laughs> but I'm good. Oh, yeah, I do because it's my channel, and if you argue with me one more time, I'm gonna rename Preston Judge Judy. Anyway, are you saying you're gonna, are you saying you're gonna remove me from the court? <laughs> I have the control of this call. I, yeah. 
Hold me in contempt. I don't want to hold you at all. I don't swing that way. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Can we get this video has gone to hell. Okay. Whatever. This is potentially the most earth shattering thing on this list, believe it or not. Who is okay. AW in trouble for making a reference to? Kobe Bryant. There we go. Do you remember when Big Show and John Cena had a battle rap on SmackDown? Yes. I am gonna be honest, with everybody. This is one where I'm gonna have the least to say because I, I probably did watch this moment, but again, I was so young because this is '03, right, Spaz? Yeah. Uh, so uh, you do guys we... are better at dates than me. I just had to YouTube it before we did this just to make sure I got the quote right. Uh, Big Show came out in like a bunch of like uh, team. Yeah, I rem I remember, but I don't remember him making the, the Kobe reference. That's the thing. I think I was Here's 12 the at the time. He tried to battle rap against John Cena, and the last line was. This Sunday, you'll be the little white girl, and I'll be Kobe Bryant. Oh, oh my God! Damn. Yeah, yeah, no, worse than AW, absolutely worse. <laughs> what the worse fuck? Than AW. Pinpoint hypocrisy. Yeah, that I'm that is. Man being fired. That is blatant hypocrisy. That's that, that, that. Hypocrisy to the max, right there. Why does Big Show still have a job? Why is AW being fired for recycling material? Yes. Not everything is stolen in pro wrestling. It's a golden rule. Uh, Nothing is original. Um, you know. I can't believe that shit. Yeah, yeah, that. Look it up. I'll send you the link. I the, I know. I don't need to look it up. I I know. Yeah, I, I, again, I, I was twelve at the time. I remember this segment because I remember how ridiculous Big Show looked. And uh, but I don't. Remember like ten before. times worse than what fucking AW say. Yeah. Like seriously. Yeah, I. I, I can't you know, defend that. that. I can't. There's no way around that. AW said that Kobe was unstoppable. AW never actually made reference to the girl, and Big Show did. Step up, I believe. Yeah. I mean, look, there, there's no way around that. I know I said a particular way of looking at things. No, that, <laughs> that is disgusting. That is wrong. Uh, definitely hypocritical on WB's part. I mean, because again, cause again Hell, that, rem- that, that's basically the entire list. I mean, I'm not saying don't continue, but I mean, fuck, this is going to top that. I mean, come I mean, Spaz, because if I remember correctly, AW said Kobe Bryant, it, it's like Kobe Bryant is unstoppable in a Colorado hotel room or something like that. Because he, he mentioned said, Colorado, he mentioned hotel room. I went back and listened to it. Literally, he said, I think he was talking about Derek. Uh, I don't even know who he was talking about, whether it was Young or O'Neill. But he said, look at him. He's exactly like Kobe Bryant in a Colorado hotel room. He's unstoppable. So that, and even though it's not, that could be a reference to Kobe Bryant just going to the bar and drinking too much one night. There you go. I mean, and, and see, that's the thing. There's a vagueness to AEW's comment where Big Show has this blatancy to it that there's no, there's nothing you can say. There's no corners you can cut. There's no apologies you can make yeah, exactly. to say, yeah, that's okay. But Big With AEW, I mean, there is a vagueness okay. to it. And and it's it's yeah, John Cena, so it's okay. And right, and again, double standard. Absolutely. We're looking at the lower crust versus the upper crust, Spaz. And again, the lower crust, I, I don't know what's going to happen with them, but something's got to change because between AW's firing and the WrestleMania payoffs, not a lower, healthy locker room. The lower crust don't become the upper crust until they stick out, and it seems like everybody that tries to stick out right now is getting their hand bitten. So, And right. that's the problem. Next thing on the list, and it's going to tie in a lot with the Zach Gowan thing, but, and again, this is somebody that I was a fan of and didn't offend me, but it potentially could have offended other people, was the character of Eugene, only because of how he was treated because of his condition by some of the heels, by some of the... I'm going to agree with you on this one. Especially Michael Cole. Yeah. And (sighs) one specific instance, it's just like a standard set of how it was every time he had a match. Okay, here's how I'm going to put this on this one, because I was actually... I'm going to be wrong regardless, I'm sure, in somebody's eyes. Uh, we all are. It didn't, be- it didn't become offensive to me until Eugene turned heel, and he became, like, a gag, where he'd, like, you know, end up... Like, I remember one time he tried to ambush DX, and he <laughs> fell flat on his ass, and, you know, that didn't work. Is that, is that the one where, like, they open the door, and he comes running in, and he hits, like, that fucking table, and I know the one yeah. you're talking about. And then, like, he gets that green shit dumped all over him, and... <laughs> like, he gets see, maybe, see, maybe, yeah. Yeah. maybe I'm a bit softer on this. Maybe I'm a bit softer on this, kind of like I was with Zach Gowan, how infuriated I was with that. It was off, because I myself deal with a disability. So I'm going to look at this differently than maybe somebody else would. 
I liked Eugene as a face when he was, you know, I remember when he was, uh, he snapped and he had his match with Triple H at SummerSlam and Triple H was like backing up the ramp and he's like, oh crap, what have I done? Like, I felt like it was really, you know, kind of inspirational to a degree. Then they turn him heel and it becomes this running gag. That's when I think it's offensive because it's like, look, this kid's not doing anything. The inspirational story is dead. I mean, the story ran its course. Really just re- release him. They're, 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 you're not inspiring anybody anymore. Now it's just sad. So that, that's how I think I'm going to put it best. I think if I really, if I wanted to be butthurt about the Eugene thing, like I say, I was a fan of him. I thought what they did with him in certain aspects was really, really great. Like he was a savant. Like he could pretty much mimic any wrestler that he used to be a fan of, whatever. Yeah, I like that. That that, that, that was cool. The one that thing that they cool. drove home all the time, and I thought they really could have done without this, was the fact that every time he came out to the ring, he always had his jacket on inside out. It was always misbuttoned. And look at how much of a wreck this guy is, more or less, in visual form. And I don't think it was necessary. Right. I mean, in comparison to AW, which we're all going to drive it home, because I know I could get lost in these moments, whatever. That is the core here, is comparing it to AW. Uh, again, I'm going to say it the same way I actually looked at it by itself. If, if we were dealing with face Eugene and he kept, like, inspiring people, I'd say AW was actually worse in this case. But then Eugene pretty much became a gag when he was heel at the butt of everybody's, you know, jokes even really then. Because, yeah, he was a face, but he always, like, won the matches and shoved it back in their faces. As a heel, it just became sad. So because of how Eugene ended, yeah, A.W. was better, and he should still have a freaking job, certainly, compared to something like this. All right. Preston, anything else to add? Good. Okay, here's one that we could potentially have some sort of sadistic fun with. One, oh, I like that. One month before JBL became the WWE champion, there was an incident... This- where people released footage of him over YouTube, goose-stepping and Nazi-saluting the entire arena at a house show in Germany. Can I also include the part where he's kicking Mexicans across the border? Sure. Okay. A uh, hundred million times worse. Yeah. That's really all I got to say about it. <laughs> That's all you got. Like, it's all I got. Like, way yeah, yeah, I, I, again... As you'll probably hear a lot throughout this video, I sign along with Preston about this one. I actually thought Spazio were going to mention how um, JBL caused Eddie Guerrero's mother to have a heart yeah, attack. Yeah, that, that was good, too. <laughs> on, honestly, though, I think that was Ed, that, I think that was Eddie's idea to get heat on JBL, so I really couldn't hold that. Yeah, that's uh, a good line. I, I mean, that would count. Yeah. In, in terms of... I feel, I feel, like, with the, I feel like with the goose-stepping in the border, though... I, I feel like with the goose-stepping in the border, though... Offensive, though, I don't think it really matters whose idea it was. The crowd's not going to be like, oh, that's offensive. Well, it was his idea. Oh, well, then it's okay. Like, if somebody's going to be offended by the idea, they're being offended by the right. idea, not where it came from. I, and think, I guess, it's... also, I can kind of forgive the grandmother spot because it, it was affecting Eddie, and it came back to the feud. When you do goose-stepping and kicking through more of the border, you're going to an entire race at that point, and you're not doing a storyline anymore. And you're I, I mean, including ha- Germany. <laughs> right. You know, in, in Nazi fashion. Again, with, with the grandmother, it was kept in the context of JBL, Eddie Guerrero. I can I can understand that because it's all about getting personal, whatever. Um, the, the goose step and the border, absolutely not because then you're offending an entire race completely. And it's like, what what is this? And in, so, in yeah, this case, they tried to toss it off as, oh, it's no big deal. It, it was just a house show. It's not like it was on TV. It don't that, fucking matter. That doesn't matter to the people that were there. That doesn't matter yeah. every single person that stumbles upon it on YouTube. Definitely. I, I agree with Spaz. I mean, nothing more WWE knows enough about social networking that they should know that nothing is private. I know, right? And, and really, I agree with you, Spaz. That's all I can really say about the matter. That, yeah. Compared to AW, definitely worse. All right, Preston, anything to add, buddy? No. Okay, here's one we can have. Oh, oh, this is... I don't I don't want to say fun with this one, because this one even still makes me turn a little bit. Randy Orton looking Rey Mysterio in the face. Oh, God. And saying, Eddie's not in heaven, Eddie's down there in hell. I don't care. I'm, I'm giving you this one, this, this one, Preston. Yeah, I do. Fuck me. <sighs> First of all, I just got to say this. Fuck WWE for that shit. Because, damn, I hate this shit. Because I, I couldn't stomach the fact that they used Eddie Guerrero's death to fucking just... Ugh! I'm sorry. I hate this shit. Uh, fuck, fuck WWE for that. I'm sorry. I don't give a fuck. 
if if that's what Eddie would have wanted or some shit that I read about some fucking writer saying that shit. Fuck that noise. I'm sorry. The Rey Mysterio stuff was completely fine. The stuff where Orton went over the line with his fucking low rider just oh, oh I hate that stuff so much. It it makes me want to cry almost. You you want me to take the reins here, bud? Yeah. Um, I again sign on with Preston. Um, I understand you. You know you're trying to build Rey Mysterio, this ultimate yes, underdog. No, I don't give a you fuck. Did, I, I was gonna, I was gonna say, Preston. I was gonna say you didn't need to resort to that though. To do it is my thing. I understand you're telling the story. You did not need to go there. And see, I hated that when they did it with Batista too in his heel turn. Yeah, that's like, stupid. Think fuck. about, think about it. He's like Eddie's dead. Well, thanks for stating the obvious yeah, there, Dave. I hate that crap. I'm sorry. Um, it's 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 exploitation at that point. That's why, honestly, I'm kind of glad the WWE has erased Chris Benoit's memory, albeit for very different reasons. But at least I know that he can't get recycled in promos and have his legacy put yeah, down. Yeah, that's bullshit. Um, so that's actually one positive I do take away from it. To exploit Eddie for a world title storyline that you could have told just as beautifully without his name. And, and I'm going to say something. If that's what the fans are pissed off about when they talk about, you know, Rey Mysterio, like, that context, I completely agree with you. I think exploiting Eddie Guerrero's death in that fashion is fucking wrong. Well, you know, Preston, I'm even going to level with you. I, I remember when Triple H... I mean, he had a match with Chavo the following night on Raw after the Rumble, and he cut a promo and saying, you know, at Ray won by divine intervention. Now, maybe it's because I'm not a religious person, but I'm like, come on now. Ray's a talented athlete. To say that he won by divine what, what's that to say? Like, if Eddie wasn't and he was alive, then Ray couldn't have done it? Like, see, I don't like those insinuations. That's yeah, I don't, again, the tributes to Eddie should not be scoffed at by fans. Some of the other stuff, I don't blame you. Honestly, I don't. Right, and then that wasn't a tribute. That's exploitation to Yes, me. exploitation, and, you can... Just, just destroy. I don't fucking care. But the tributes that Ray did, don't, don't. That's wrong. That's very wrong. And yeah, it's a, it's a fine line, bro. Right. But I, I agree with you. This, the Triple H promo, that, that sickened me. Because first of all, I think it's demeaning Ray as an athlete. It which is. you're not doing. It is. Uh, and, and of course, you're exploiting Eddie. Come on. Like, um, and then, of course, Randy Orton, which is the point you brought up, Spaz. Yeah, he got his ass kicked, but he still said it. He, you know, and, and that's the thing. Um, they're very yeah. There's no payoff that makes that worth it. Yeah, there's exactly because the man's dead, and that, and that's something I think I should also say. Yes, I do stand by what I've said in earlier things. The payoff I think does matter, but when the man is dead, I think you're dealing with an entirely different scenario. And Eddie Guerrero had passed. It wasn't a kayfabe death like the Undertaker does 500 times, <laughs> you know, throughout his career. This was, you know, Kylie Jenner really passed of the Like again, and, I, I I had Ray's book. I read the part where he talks about his death. I cried when I read. Like, it's so bad. Just fuck that shit. Can we move on, please? And again, AW, AW statement. Oh, just an actual AW promo. AW was a fucking church. Child's play. Child's play. Child's church child's floor play. or something. I don't know. Compared to that shit. Just go Okay. On. I got good news for you guys. We've got a fun one coming up so we can all relax a little bit. Good. Sweet. This is one. Okay. As far as, like, anything other than a wrestling match, this is one of my favorite personal wrestling segments of all time but that's because i'm an asshole i know what this is no, i think i know no, what this no, is god i guarantee you don't i love this because i'm a guy and because everything down there still works the edge and lita live sex celebration yes i did know it spaz <laughs> it was either that it was either that or john cena's father getting punted in the head because of your scene <laughs> hey, i don't i don't visit the sins of the son on the father hey don't put me in one of those guys but no i knew it was going to be a live sex celebration yes and this was a fun one <laughs> um, now but okay as much as i like it i like it because it's potentially offensive so who wants to take this away um, I guess I'll start this one since Preston, you kind of took the reins of the last one and I followed. Um, I think what I like about this from what I remember, Spaz, I mean, certain things were implied, but they never came like right out and did anything offensive during the celebration. Uh, Edge didn't get fully naked. Lita was down to her bra and panties, which, you know, was always a pleasant sight, especially, you know, if you're a Lita Mark, like oh, I know you are, you're very Even if you're not a Lita Mark, if you don't, you know, get your attention up to see Lita almost fucking naked. You're either Billy and Chuck, or there's something wrong with you. <laughs> um, I don't, my take on it is, I see it all the time on TV. It's not offensive to me at all. Yeah, but it was uh, the first time it was the first time WWE had taken it that far, even in right. the era. And like, <laughs> I just I loved it, but I realize at the same time that the exact same reason I love it is because yeah, exactly. So I mean, I mean, when you, you know, think about, think about how many times a personality like uh, 
Oh, I'm sorry to cut you off, Spence. Finish your statement. I was just saying, even though I loved it, when you weigh the potential backlash of it, still a lot worse than AW. Yeah. And, you know, think think about, I mean, of course we're dealing with the medium and television, so I guess automatically you're dealing with different circumstances. But think about Howard Stern on radio, how much he gets fined for the stuff that he would do on his show. WWE's kind of bringing some of that risque material to the television screen. But I, I love Prick Edge. And he's like, I'm going to have a three-way with Lita in this WWE title. I'm like, you <laughs> bastard. <laughs> it's so good. Um, but no, Spaz, I guess my thing is, you enjoyed it, but you have to be understanding of why people would be offended by it. A- AW, again, it's a statement. And I think, again, this I want to fight this in the beginning. Again, this was booked. Vince McMahon but I in the WWE booked sex. And and that's just it. I think the worst thing about the statement, because I know I said it at the beginning, but I don't know if everybody caught that because it seemed like the audio for me was out of kilter a little bit. So I do want to restate it here. I think the worst thing about the statement was, one, it was Kobe Bryant and it was a rape charge that he wasn't convicted for, which we need to stress. Two, it related to Colorado, which could have offended a lot of people because it was in the wake of the big theater shooting. I personally learned about that. I don't know how many other people learned about that. I did. And, I did and, and, instantly. And, and you to see, see, so I know I'm not alone. I think AW, again, it was a double shot in the foot. However... Considering this list, everything on this list, everything, not one. You, you've seen the checklist, people. Everything we've said, more offensive than AW, more offensive than AW. And while I thoroughly enjoyed this, except Cena crashing the party afterwards, fuck you, Cena. Um, more offensive than AW again. I so. think Cena is more offensive than AW. <laughs> <laughs> and I take out the Abacus, folks. And oh that my was god, fun. the Abacus from Grappler's Grab Bag won. <laughs> I have fond memories, dude. I'm not letting them go. No, of course not. <laughs> Shitty recorder and all. Anyways, speaking of Cena, <laughs> next one on the list. When Cena was a younger champion, still trying to pass off the whole rapper gimmick, what was the one thing people might want to say to him? Something along the lines of what they would say to Eminem, dude, go look in the mirror, you're white, or something like that. Or that's at least what I wanted to say to him when he first came on the scene. Now, we have an interaction in the back. Between John Cena and a Vince McMahon that's trying to be very cool. And the very last thing he said to John Cena oh. before he walked away was, Well, keep it up, my nigga. And Booker T was standing right behind him. Yeah. And then he did tell me you did not just say that. Yep. <laughs> that I have the DVD. Uh, however many year old he is, man, millionaire spewing out nigger on national television. Just say. Pay-per-view. Pay-per-view. It's not TV. Well, Vince, I guess it's time for the home. (laughs) (laughs) Look it up and throw away the key. (laughs) First of all, all, here it is. Okay, we might as well get it out of the way right away. More offensive than AW? Yes. 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 Okay, analysis. Go. Um, I'll take it. The N-word and Booker T was less than two feet. Do I even need to analyze that at all? Analyze? Analyze. (laughs) Analyze that. You can talk. You swear. First time we've used that phrase in this video. Yes. Yeah. It's going to be good. Anyway. By the way, we use that phrase in real life. So, yeah. Yeah, curse you, Spaz Phoenix. You and your catchphrases rubbing off on the rest of us. Hey, Um, Alex said it, and I agree. If I can make a botch into a catchphrase, I must be pretty (laughs) fucking awesome. (laughs) <laughs> um, here's the thing, Spaz. I, I, I you know, it, it's sad whoever does it. I, I think WWE thought they could get away with it because Vince was an old man and he was white doing all this and they thought it could make it comical. No, it's not comical. It's sad. It, 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 it's sad. Uh, put that on top of the fact that he was ECW champion and he had the most awful looking get up. It was, it, it was one of the worst angles of my lifetime. Oh, my God. John Morris into Punk, how far we had fallen with that title. Good God. Um, yeah, yeah, definitely. definitely that was sad. after that feud, by the way. Yeah, yeah I know. I, I know. That's why we call it the shithole. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, yeah, definitely offensive, definitely horrible. Nothing more you can say than that. Okay. Nobody has anything else to say on that? I thought it was hella funny, and my thought in the back of my head at the time. Um... I'll put it to you like this, only because Alex is the silent guy in the audience who decided he didn't want to actually be part of this video. I'll kind of poke fun at him for a second, because when I watched WrestleMania, and I saw the 18-second match, I laughed my ass off, and I laughed my ass off the most, because I was like, oh shit, Alex is going to die, and YouTube is going to be the sufferer for it. That was my response, and... (laughs) 
I'm sorry. And guess what? And guess what, Maz? It was mine too. <laughs> I was probably I was probably the only one who genuinely felt bad for Alex. I, I did it because I was laughing my ass off on the inside. <laughs> no, no, I I was pissed and I was very upset for Alex. So just know, Alex. I had your back that night, dude. <laughs> There's no pity in the YWC, but I did the same thing with this, is I was laughing my ass off, because Vince McMahon is great. I mean, as much as people want to say something, but the, the, the Mr. McMahon character is always hilarious because of how seriously he thinks he takes himself. And I'm like, oh, there's going to be a lot of people pissed off about that. And I'm not one of them, so I'm going to go laugh now. <laughs> so are, are, are you saying, Spaz, that AEW was actually more offensive in this case, just so we're clear? Oh, no, no. I'm, I'm not saying that either was offensive, actually. I'm saying the potential for offense is there, as I've been saying the whole video. It's not for me right. to carve in stone what is or isn't offensive. And I don't think I have so far in this video, in our conversation. I'm saying I'm addressing the potential for offense. Right. And the next one, it'll be a lot more poignant. Speaking of Vince McMahon, and I haven't actually been able to find this. But apparently there's several interviews that Vince McMahon has done over the years where he says he was always nervous about having Sabu as part of the show because he didn't want people thinking the WWE hired terrorists. Oh, wow. Yeah, that I never even knew that. I didn't know that either. Being a Sabu mark when he came to WWE. That's yeah. fucked up. That's, that's seriously fucked up. I'm gonna have nothing else to add to that. I'm mean, fucked up. Wait, 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 I need to say something if I may. Sure. Okay. So he he's scared with Sabu, but a very promising career in Mohammed Hassan. You have him do an angle where masked men in the wake of London bombings choke out the Undertaker. And I'm a Mohammed Hassan fan. I'm not against Mohammed Hassan. I I honestly thought that. Although Mohammed Hassan had one of the best spots I've ever seen done to him. Yeah. Yeah. I. Yeah, yeah, that, that and, and the idea that I, yeah, yeah last ride through the stage. Oh, yeah. And I feel like he was one of the best heels on the product at the time. Say, Say what anybody wants. He was the last great on American gimmick that I've seen. Uh, Jinder Mahal, take notes. Um, fuck Jinder Mahal. And my thing is, it's hypocritical. Because, you know, Sabu came after the fact. He didn't do anything near that offensive. And yet you always had that fear in the back of your mind. Really? But you green-lighted mass men choking out The Undertaker and then carrying out Dabari in a symbolic manner while, you know, Muhammad Hassan's on his knees and he's raising the hands up to Allah, supposedly. Yeah. Um, and again, nothing against Muhammad Hassan. I was really big on the guy. Yep. Huge. But it is what it is, right? And this was definitely more offensive than AW. Absolutely. That and the Sabu comment, more offensive than AW. Definitely this, hypocritical. This wasn't said during WWE programming either. This was said in other people just randomly interviewing Vince McMahon about his right. product. And, and that's even up. worse. Because you're saying Mr. McMahon, the man, not the character. Exactly. So first of all, you're admitting that you're nervous about your own product. That doesn't make it sound too good. Second of all, you're putting the idea in people's heads, even if you're saying it in a negative fashion, that one of your superstars may be considered a terrorist. Good job, Vinny. Nothing more you can say than that. I'm embarrassed for Vince after hearing that. Uh, like, I, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of speechless here. <laughs> I... All right, well, you're, John, you're not going to like the next one. I can tell you that right now. But, Preston, do you have anything to say about the Sabu thing? Not really. That's okay. fucked up. Now, because John is in this call, I'm going to f make sure I phrase this properly. Oh, boy. Here we go. The Chris Benoit incident and the tribute that came after it with the aftermath that came after the tribute and the accusations and the facts that we found out after the fact, there are people, and they may or may not have a point, it's not for me to say, that found out after the fact what he had done, that go back and say that there shouldn't have been a tribute. Now, is it realistic? No, because they did a tribute at the time where they didn't know all of those facts, but I can still understand people's emotions taking over and saying something dumb, like, well, they shouldn't have done a trip. No comment at this time. Preston, can you take this, please? Right, yep. um, I don't agree with them, but I can understand their emotional response. I understand it, too. And, That's all uh, I'm say. Really, I really don't even want to talk uh, about this. No, I, I have to say something, don't I? Because it's me. 
Um, say whatever you want. I had to I, go through that shit with fucking Ray, so yeah, you had yeah, to. Yeah, okay, bitch cake. Calm yourself. <laughs> um, boys, boys. Yeah, I, I guess I guess I do have to say something here. Preston's right. I understand it, but I don't agree with it because. WWE didn't have all the details the time they they aired the tribute. They treated it the same way they treated Eddie. They wanted to pay respect to one of the greatest workers of all time. The moment they got all the details, Vince McMahon came out. He publicly apologized. He said no mention is going to be made of Chris Benoit tonight. Or ever. And, and he, and, or ever. Or ever. They didn't have the details. They acted on impulse. you got to understand, it was, I don't know when it came to light that this happened and how close to showtime it was. It was a three-hour Raw that was dedicated to the Vince McMahon angle of him blowing up in a limousine. They had plans. They had big things going. The, the arena was empty. They did the tribute. They acted on impulse without all the evidence coming to light. If you're a multi-billion dollar company and, and you're scrambling because this news is coming out, your storyline's getting scrapped, all this stuff is happening at once, you have to act on a certain impulse. And yeah, maybe me being a Chris Benoit mark that has said I would spit in the face of God if it meant me seeing Benoit on the other side, yeah, maybe my opinion doesn't have the most credibility. But, you know, the idea is they didn't have all the evidence then. They did. You haven't heard a mention of Chris since. He's taken off some DVDs. His memory has practically been erased, which I completely disagree with. You know, I can't fault them here. I, I can understand it, Spaz, to your question. I can understand why people would be upset wholeheartedly. But we need to look at it chronologically. Absolutely. They did the tribute before all the evidence came to light. And if I'm going to get crucified for that, please, I welcome it. I really do. Um, yeah, and I just I can't fault WWE for this. The thing is, though, and the th and the only w reason I will I will back what these people are saying because you're right. If you you have to go with what you know at the time, when you have such an emotional response to something, the the details and I'm gonna call chronology a small detail at this point fall out of your head and you're driven by emotion, which is why I say after the fact, if you do the tribute, all the facts come out. And then you say after the fact, wow, he really didn't deserve the tribute that they gave him. Your 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 opinion that he didn't deserve the tribute may be valid, but to be offended that they did a tribute not knowing is a little skewed. But again, right. the potential for offense, very, very high. Oh, oh it's, it's definitely there, and it's definitely very high. That's why it also sickened me that the news media pounced on it. Like, they acted like they had full knowledge that WWE knew about the, the heinousness all of these crimes still aired the tribute, completely skewing information, completely manipulating it for your personal ratings and your personal viewership. That's what's really disgusting here, if you want my honest opinion, how the media handled this whole thing. Uh, but that's another story for another time. As far as WWE goes, I wholeheartedly agree with you, Spaz. The potential for events is very high, lethal levels. But when emotion comes into play, when you lose a valued work that a lot of people's lives are touched by... The rationality is bound to take over. And if anybody can tell me that they would be in Vince's shoes and they would have one ounce of logic left in them, I wouldn't believe you. And that's just me. So, impact greater than AW? Absol absolutely. <laughs> Again, you know, we have to look at it. I mean, I may have won on my diatribe, but I've got to be honest. Still, the potential for offense is much higher than the actual offense of what AW's comments caused. So, again, blatant hypocrisy by WWE here. Okay. Preston. What? Anything? No. Oh, you're good. All right. Here's one we can have a little bit of fun with, because I, I, you know, I was going to say I think, but in fact, I know I'm the only Canadian in the room. Shawn Michaels picking his nose with and then fucking the Canadian flag. Do we even have to analyze that? Like, First of all, honestly, honestly we have to ask the question. More potentially damaging. Well, yeah, it is. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it is. I mean, again, I, I really, it, it's degrading another country. Jericho got suspended for, for, for you know, kicking, kicking, kicking the flag, not, not fucking, fucking the fucking flag. Seriously. Or sticking it up his nose. And, and years later, and years later, if anybody remembers a faction called the Un-Americans with Lance Storm, Christian, and Tess, they attempted a flag burning. Didn't they even succeed in one? Or was it only attempts? Because well, I, I know they made an attempt, and it was the night the can returned. I don't know if they did a flag burning, though, beforehand. I think it was one of those, you know, you get the can, you start the fire, they grab the flag at the last minute type things. Right. right. Uh, they they never really burned one, but still, the attempt, the insinuation that, yeah, we're going to do this, that's, that's awful. Shawn Michaels using a Canadian flag as a nose picker. Look, I don't care that I'm American, I'm not Canadian, I can't identify on that level. Offensive is offensive, and you're insulting an entire country. Oh, yeah. um, great, great heat my ass. Uh, you know. and, and I'll say, like, honestly, I'm a big Shawn Michaels mark. Even though I am up here in the Great White North, I still thought it was fucking hysterical. 
but you know the the potential for offense is compounded, especially because Shawn Michaels is so good at pissing people off, and that's really what right. really the crux of this whole thing is like we're punishing heels for doing their job, and that's exactly what's happening to AW right now. Exactly. Yeah, I mean, and, really, and in that context, to, he was a heel uh, for extent. Chris Jericho as well. Exactly. exactly. All right. And Preston's kind of being quiet. You have, you have anything else to say, Preston? No. No, we're good? Okay. I'm not going to talk about events or specific scenes or whatever, and these are two characters that I love, but the two characters that are potentially offensive just by existing, Val Venus and the Godfather. Uh, a pimp and a porn star. I'm trying to think. Yeah, yeah for, for me, it's an open and shut case. Okay. Definitely more offensive than AW. These were actual characters that did things on a week to week basis. One statement, one night, one segment. Apologized for. Definitely more offensive. That's really all I can say about this, Baz. No uh, more honestly, I, I, I'm right there with John. Like, these were characters. This man made a statement in one segment. One. Yep, one statement. These were brand new people brought in to be characters that were written and lasted for years. Godfather came out, you know, and we'll go on a little sub-jaunt with this. Godfather came out with his hose. Offensive? Definitely. Val Venus had various girls from the crowd and, you know, other people's sisters and wives and whatever throughout his career pawing all over him and hanging out with him in a towel and such and such. Now, it made for great, compelling, hysterical television, but potential for offense? Greater than AW? <laughs> yeah. Definitely. Definitely. All right. I, uh, I actually crossed him off the list because I didn't think it was worth mentioning, but I will mention it anyways, just because it was really, really gross. Big Dick Johnson. <laughs> Honestly, I'd say no on this one. I mean, yeah, again, AW, it's one statement. I can't stress that enough. But a statement over a guy who really just danced. And really, his only crime was being grotesque. Uh, I actually thought that Big Dick Johnson um, was a part of one of my favorite moments where uh, J.R. Lowe blowed him. And he took back his seat at the announce table. And I guess that's Yeah, honest, honestly, you guys, this is one time I'm going to say no. AW was worse. I'm going to say I'm going to say for the first time in this video. Um, I do think AW was worse than Big Dick Johnson. I mean, really though, but to be fair, it's it's really not even a lot of ammo. That's the thing. I mean, it's it's a pretty weak thing. Well, I, I never saw anything that's a big. But then it's just for me personally. It's like, why is this guy on my TV? So I found him offensive. Right. I found right. him right. more offensive than AW because AW got right. pants on. Anyways, okay, here we go. Another one for good old Vinnie Mac. And this is this was something that happened a lot. This became an institution almost. The Vince McMahon Kiss My Ass Club. Oh. More offensive than AW? Yes. <laughs> okay, sorry. Vince McMahon's ass. More offensive. Okay, than... yeah. There you go. Yeah. yeah. Now the more you can say than that. You, you have a man publicly getting his ass kissed on live television. And again, as I cannot stress enough, people are going to want to kill me at the end of this video if they haven't already. It was a statement. Nothing physical came of it. This was a club. This was a ritual. I mean, it became so popular that in Mick Foley's book, Hardcore, um, you know, Hardcore Diaries, actually wanted it as a core part of a storyline between him and Terry Funk and, and Edge and all of them going into um, Extreme Rules. You know, you know, that's how big of an institution it became, that other superstars actually wanted to use it for storylines, but still incredibly offensive. In an interview, um, friggin', who was it? It was Roddy Roddy Pello. Did we just lose John? No, no Alex, Alex left. Oh, okay, I'm good. Your thing went blank. But anyways, no, in an interview that I saw on the score with Rowdy Roddy Piper, they talked about the Vincent Band Kiss My Ass Club, and it was in the middle of a conversation. It's like... Uh, <laughs> What's his name? Roddy Piper. What number are we on? Uh, we've only got, like, four more. We're good. We're getting there. It's a long journey, but we're getting there. But okay. no, Roddy Roddy... I can do four more. Roddy Roddy Piper set, was saying to the guy that was interviewing him, a guy by the name of Ardo O'Cal, how much are you willing to prostitute yourselves to have a career? At one point, they came to me and said, we'll let you have another run if you can kiss Vince's ass. And Roddy Piper says, you don't have that kind of money. And good, good for Roddy Piper. That makes me even a bigger fan of his after hearing that. 
He was also uh, I didn't know that. face from Rikishi, and he said no. He was, wow. he was also supposed to have a romantic storyline with Linda McMahon, and he said no. That's fucked up. Yeah, it is. But, but good for Roddy Piper, though, for sticking his ground. That makes me a bigger fan of his. I did not know any of this. There we go. Um, Watch this. Good for Roddy. There's good for the hot Rod. Anyways. Okay, so not much more to say about the Vince McMahon Kiss My Ass Club, eh? It's just, it was what it was. No, it's, it's just, it's, it's, it's entertaining, but definitely more offensive than an offhanded comment as a manager. Oh. So... Okay, another one for Vince, and this is one I know we all have strong feelings on. Vince McMahon's treatment of Jim Ross, specifically his Bell's palsy. Uh, <laughs> uh, honestly, just, yeah, it's more offensive, and it's fucking wrong. Like, that's all I gotta say about it. Like, fuck Vince, that's it. Yeah, really, I uh, I guess I, I do want to go a little bit more than Preston, because that really does anger me. I, I think because, again, I am a mark for Jim Ross, but looking at Jim Ross the man, the servitude that he has given WWE and to get that kind of treatment in turn. And not just the making fun of the Bell's palsy. The segments where he gets low blowed or beaten up or, or, or this, that, or the other. Or, or fired. Or kissed and, you know, it's, ass or gets set on fire. And, and, and oh, see again. Okay. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Kane on fan. Kane's a good one. Sorry. R- really? You, yeah. you think so? Yeah. See, I, even, I, I guess for that, Preston, he really was a cog in a storyline to further Kane's cool. heel heat. And, and it really didn't come down to humiliating Jim Ross the man. It was more about making that a was statement. Fine. Like, if, if it would have really happened, like, yeah, but it's... Right. right. Yes, but I, I just think, for me, it, it goes back to what I said at the beginning. Of where was Jim Ross? Jim Ross the announcer. He's not going to get any kind of a fucking payoff. This is cruel and demeaning for the sake of being cruel and demeaning. Right. And, well, and, and that's my thing. For the Kane thing, and I, and I don't care because it doesn't offend me, but you want to talk hypocrisy, you've got... Freaking a company that says they, you know, they're all about anti-bullying and whatever. You got a big seven-foot giant that's going to go pick on an announcer who's disabled. Anti-bullying yeah. campaign. I, I know. I know. Just saying Stupid. that. There it is. Hey, hey W, why? Why'd you lose your job? <laughs> <laughs> oh, he made some joke that somebody didn't like. And all right. Vince's treatment of JR is just in the toilet. And not much else you can say about that. Uh, along the same lines... Uh, Jerry the King Lawler, I love him most of the time, but his commentary anytime Vicky Guerrero was in the vicinity. Uh, stupid. More offensive than AW? Yes. yes. <laughs> uh, I got nothing else. I just had to stick it in there. John? John? John. Have we lost John? I don't know. Uh, I'm back. Sorry, guys. The way Jerry the King Lawler talks about Vicky Guerrero. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I've got a soft spot in my heart for Vicky. She's just doing her job, and it's not like she ever goes over and gives Jerry Lawler a good slap, which I would mark out she for. She should. Kid. She should. Definitely. definitely very distasteful on Jerry Lawler's part, and I think he only does it because he's not the man he used to be back in the 90s or early 2000, yeah. and he's just grasping at straws. Way, Way to go, Jerry. Way, Way to go. Yeah. Don't be a bully. Be a star. <laughs> yeah, how would you like it if Vicky made fun of your drunken son back in Memphis? Oh, yeah, I read into things. <laughs> Damn. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm, oh, we shouldn't make fun of alcoholism, should we? We shouldn't make fun of a woman's weight. We shouldn't make fun of women, Ooh, period. fantastic these days anyway. That's the other part. <laughs> yeah, really, Vicky really does look good. That's the thing. I'm sorry. I mean, yeah, I noticed. Sorry, I take that home. Definitely. And, and really, here's my thing, and I've always attributed it to this, and I'm not trying to sound insensitive. I really, I, I don't mean this to be insensitive when I say this. I think the only reason she had that weight gain was because the loss of, oh, I don't know, her husband, Eddie Guerrero, devastated her. So, so like, you know, I did, did notice it, yeah, but I, I never, like, picked on her for it. something. I'm like, God, it must have really hit her hard. Like, it hit all of us hard. I mean, for God's sake, you know, we left three children behind How about just fuck Jerry Lawler and just move the fuck on? Yeah, yeah fuck Jerry Lawler. I, yeah, that's, that's good enough. I am subscribed to a Vicky Guerrero page on Facebook, and there are pictures up there of her and her daughter, who's also a knockout, in, like, matching bikinis. Shaw Guerrero. <laughs> and Preston. Exfoliating ugliness to her. God. Damn! Sorry. Oh, she's like one of the main reasons I'm watching NXT now. I'm not even gonna lie. But her and her oh, mom in matching bikinis. Mm-mm. Damn. <laughs> I'm gonna do you, and then I'm gonna do where you came from. As a friend of mine told another friend of mine. <laughs> <laughs> that legit was a conversation between two other friends of mine that I'm not gonna get into in this video. Good idea. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Except <laughs> they were dating at the time. <laughs> Okay, 
John, John, who's my biggest yes. buddy in the WWE? John Cena. Okay. It was my question. <laughs> I don't give a shit. I knew the answer. <laughs> John oh was the one in the class with all the right answers, but Preston was the one sitting in the corner shining up the apple. And <laughs> you opportunistic son of a bitch. Yeah. Uh, maybe the ultimate one. Anyways, moving on. Now, in the lead up to uh, Rock versus Cena, we had the Battle of the Microphone, or the attempt at the Battle of the Microphone that John Cena lost in spades because he just responded by rapping. How many times did John Cena in his raps at least infer that The Rock was gay? But Cena has done that before. But, but no, no, that does that should have discouraged the fact, though, that he's head. making fun of homosexuality yeah. and making jokes about it. That's the context of this. Yeah. Yes, he's done it before. But again, you know, it's, it's like we said earlier in this video, just because somebody's done something or somebody gets a certain payoff, you know, you know we still have to look at it for what it is. And, uh, you, know, you know, yeah, that, that was definitely, you know, and it's, it's just, and see, the thing is, I, I'm not saying I could forgive it if it was anybody else, because, I mean, again, I, I'm pro-gay marriage. I think homosexuals should have rights. I have nothing against them. But I think what makes it worse in Cena's case is he is the leader. He is the guy who does be a star. He is the guy who does make a wish. And he makes these statements... And it's like, well, what are you trying to say, John? I mean, how many of those kids that you granted wish for may grow up to be homosexual? Mm -hmm. I mean, I mean, really, you know, how many kids that you're talking to want to be a star may be struggling with their feelings because they may not understand if they're gay or not. I and you're making something like this. Is when you call, and this goes for anybody, not just John Cena, because I didn't mean this. Right, to, right, yeah. I don't need to make this to be a big John Cena rant, even though I could. I think the whole idea is if you are making fun of somebody and you turn around and call them gay, not only are you trying to insult them, but you're also inferring that gay is an insult and therefore gay is wrong, and that's where the truly offensive bit comes in. Yeah. Yes. Yes, I wholeheartedly agree with that. And um, I think Johnny's just pissed because his marriage didn't end too well. Um, uh, he's going to be grabbing it in the dark alone for a while. Yeah, yeah, oh, that, that right hand will be doing more than just telling people he can't see. I'm, I'm not jumping into that shark tank if you fucking paid me, but okay, <laughs> can we move on now? Uh, yes. Yeah, that's all I really want to say. Preston, you've got nothing to say about John Cena and his comments? Not really. John Cena's gay bashing more offensive than AW? Yes. yes. Definitely. And this one, the last one, and I saved this for last because it has a close and personal moment in my heart. WWE is big on social media, yes? Yeah. Right. The big show attacking me on Twitter. <laughs> I, I, I've i been meaning to tell you that was so beast, the video yeah, you yeah, made. Boy. I was yeah, like, yeah. Uh, don't be a bully. Be a <laughs> star. Be a <laughs> with, with the it. fucking notepad, I was just like dying. I'm trying like, to remember, I'm trying to remember, did you give a classic Mick Foley thumbs up afterwards? I, no, I, I, I saw you I a pad of paper and a Sharpie and I just drew a star on the pad of paper and I just smiled next to it. That's even better than the Mick Foley thumbs up. Um, right here. Yes, as, <laughs> there, there is so much so much wrong with this, but I guess since you saved it for last, you did want it to be a big talking piece. First and foremost, you know, aside from the fact that you are my friend and, yeah, there's that personal influence, you are a consumer and you are talking about the product. And you don't give it positive for this one performer. So instead of this performer taking your criticism under advisement and maybe getting better or at the very least... Engaging you in a debate that keeps the, you know, attack on the idea is not the man. He doesn't, he doesn't do either of those. Didn't and didn't he call you an asshole in that tweet? Uh, what? Pull it up if you'd really like me to. Here it is. Uh, my comment was on his match. Hold on. His match with Cena and how there were a lot of rest holds and a lot of headlocks. And my comment was, during Raw, this is why I don't want to see Big Show and John Cena in a main event. The comment back and this is the the language of this was what made me think that it had to be a big show fan that's why i went back to make sure it was actually the big show and it took me right back to wwe.com so i'm like yeah whatever uh the quote from him and it's not even typed properly or in any kind of good english but the quote is and i quote it's called storytelling, you dumbass. Nobody does it anymore it's all just bumps and chaos know what you're talking about before you open your mouth because first of all, he's trying to tell you what to do as a consumer. That's great. Second of all, he calls you a dumbass, which demeans you. Again, uh, putting the fact that you're my friend aside, right. you are a consumer. You are giving honest feedback about a product that you engage with on a weekly basis. 
Real, real nice, big show. What I find more offensive than this, and it's not even the attack on me, it's the fact that freaking Big Show is trying to put himself over as the best technical storyteller in the company. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah n- name CM Punk. Come but. back to me when you've had a five star match, motherfucker. Yeah, then we'll talk. Come back to you when you know what ring psychology is. True. <laughs> Other than I'm a big giant. Ooh. Well, it's the big slob. <laughs> and by the way, the funny thing about the big slow comment is I didn't even realize that The Rock said that once. <laughs> like, I just always, I came, I thought I could move them on my own. No, The Rock said it before me. So. What, the big slow? Yeah. yeah. Everybody says it, dude. Yeah. I started, I started big blow. It. <laughs> Jesus and Mark Pearson saw, uh, said it in videos, and I just took it after that. But it's like, really? On the one hand, I'm very, very amused by the fact that he felt the need. And I, I need to point this out as well. This was not tweeted out as a response. This was not tweeted out to the general public. No, 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 no. This attack was so personal that he felt the need to send it in a private inbox message. Oh, wow. And, and Spaz, let me just say this, and I don't want to be that guy again, but I feel like if we're going to hold one person accountable, we should hold everybody accountable. I mean, I mean the, the, this is the tragedy of social media. CM Punk told a fan to kill himself. Um, yeah. CM Punk, I think, has also said other inflammatory things to fans before. Um, and, and, you know, other inflammatory comments by some stars that I can't necessarily recall here, just the CM Punk one jumped out at me. Now, I love CM Punk to death. Right. But, but you told a fan to go kill themselves. And, and you're WWE champion. The line, uh, and here's where I don't know whether people will agree with me or not. If you put it out there for the world to see, I see that as being a character. I see that as playing up after the cameras go off the air. Now, did it go over the line? Absolutely. But that's playing up, playing your character, like I say, after the cameras go off. Private message only came to me. Only um, came to me. And there, there's more pointedness to that. And I think... If you want to legitimately try and scold somebody for being a critic, A, you're being a censor. B, you're telling that consumer they're not entitled to their opinion. Right. right. Um, to your point, though, in regards to the one CM Punk comment I made and then the response in character, I'd have to disagree with you because I think the, um, I think, I think the comment ensued because it was a gay marriage debate, and Punk is pro-gay marriage like I am, and I, I assume you are because our discussion Oh, yeah, completely pro-gay marriage. Um... And, and, you know, and the one fan, I guess, said that he didn't believe in it, to which Punk responded, kill, kill yourself. So, I mean, that's not really character. That's in and, you know, getting, getting caught up in the in moment. In my opinion, it. CM Punk took it too far. I don't think you should have said kill yourself. I think you should have said something else. Yeah, yeah keep it classy. Is one of the, I mean, I love Punk right. to death. But, I mean, again, we're not holding it, we're not holding anybody on a pedestal here, are we? We're, we're holding everybody <laughs> accountable. And, you know, we're treating everybody like they should be treated. Preston is very big on CM Punk. In fact, Preston, I think he's going to recognize that CM Punk is your second favorite performer in the company right now. Yeah, yeah. Uh, behind, of course, Rey Mysterio. Uh, but, but that, yeah, no. Spoiler alert. Um, well, you know, CM Punk did say this, and Big Show did say this, and I do agree with you. I think it also says something else when it's inbox. He's like, oh, I better keep my character on the wrap, so I'll just insult this guy privately, which makes it even worse. Because, like, you feel so compelled to do this, you're going to keep it under wraps. You know that it's wrong, but you're going to do it anyway. So I expected it. I expected there to be a box underneath, be like, Spaz Phoenix, I thought you were my friend. <laughs> <laughs> You're free. I'm sorry. Oh I'm my sorry. god. <laughs> no, Big Show can be fired. That's cool, and I wouldn't be sorry at all. Yeah, I, would, I don't yeah. care how striking that sounds. I hate the Big Show. Fuck him. I don't know if that's the way you want to swing. I think he might squish it. <laughs> oh god. I um. Yeah, I'm you might see that book. when it's all said and done. <laughs> After, after his work with Daniel Bryan and Mark Henry, I, I just feel like Big Show, that that, that was the last really Especially good thing. Especially his matches with Mark Henry. Good fucking God. I enjoyed those. Suck. That's what I'm saying, though. I thought those were really good. Did you say uh, Okay, fine. Oh, I, I did. Raw, he took out, or he almost took out Randy Orton. He took out Cena, who's the golden boy, whether we like it or not, and he took out CM Punk. And he basically tore down one of your main announcers. That's way more exposure than he needs. After a super boring as fuck match with the golden boy the week before that I made one comment about and he made Big Show angry face and then he hit his head on a ceiling lamp. Anyway. <laughs> see what I did there? <laughs> because to quote Mark Henry in a promo, he is the world's largest loser. God, I miss Mark Henry. Don't let your foolish pride get in the way of Twitter. Don't let your foolish pride get in the way of being a star. 
neither of them were stars. I'm in the fucking Twilight Zone, it's a word. Right <laughs> he fails at being a bully and a star. <laughs> Like, Jobber, at, he, Jobber. He, he fails at life. <laughs> yeah, but he can't die because he'd probably fail at death, too. <laughs> Anyways, so last one on the list. Big Show. I think our diatribe may have been more offensive than AW right there. <laughs> Holy crap. Big Show <laughs> trying to bully the YWC, personified by me, on Twitter. More offensive than AW? <laughs> <laughs> yes. I win! I <laughs> This has gone way too long. Anything anybody you guys want to add to the whole AW situation? Yeah. Um, just as I said at the beginning, you know, it's really a shame that a man lost his job for this. Uh, if any, you know, I didn't mean to come across as an apologist at any point in this video. I just look at it with a certain view. But regardless of what view I look at it as, and certain things I said in certain segments in this video, the, the bottom line is... That every moment here, with the exception of which you crossed off Big Dick Johnson, so that didn't even make it onto the actual list, was more offensive than Abraham Washington, at least in my eyes. So, um, definitely want feedback on this, guys. What do you think? Were there any moments that you felt were less offensive than AW? Was AW's termination wrongful? Do you think, like, is it whatever? You know, give us some feedback, guys. Actually, there's one thing I'd like to add, and I was debating whether or not I was going to add this in or not because I saw this in another video, and I don't want to name names because I don't want to offend people. But the idea that this video, and I, if I'm honest, I don't remember what video it was in, but somebody put out the idea there that it was a, it's unfortunate what happened to AW, but he should have taken the warning when he saw what happened to Chris Jericho. That is pretty right, <laughs> honestly. Um... See, I'm on the fence with that, because again, it goes back to Chris Jericho did a physical action to try and get heat. This was a comment. Was it a comment, John? It was a comment, Spaz. It was a comment. We, we have that confirmed. Our sources confirm it. <laughs> it was a comment. I checked um, it, but no DQ. I, I can see, but then again, I could definitely see, Preston, where you're coming from, because you see what happens to other co-workers when they do things that are seemingly harmless. Take the hint. And um, I, Jericho's but at the same a better time, game than AW, and I, we've said this whole video that that's not the, that shouldn't be the point. But realistically, it has to factor in. And if some, if you see Jericho getting a suspension, and you know you're not nearly on the same place on the totem pole, but yeah, how I, about on the bottom of the fucking totem pole? Yeah, I, yeah. That way. Well, I'll press the bottom of the totem pole, but billions of dollars, billions. Of dollars. Shut uh, up. Billions of pennies. Uh, so billions of pennies. But the, <laughs> the idea being, of course, you know, the punishment should fit the crime, no matter who you are. It it's true that that's the way the world should be, but that's a fantasy. And reality setting in and saying, okay, you saw what happened to a much higher star when they took it a little too far. Maybe you should have watched what you said. Um, but at the same time, it's like, I don't think you really did it. I don't know, be that as it may. So, guys, also, anybody that's made it this far in the video, first of all, you get a gold medal and a cookie. Second of all, what do you guys think of that in the box below? Anyways, so that was my last idea. John's put in his two cents. Preston, you got anything else you want to say, bud? And he's dead, everyone. Oh, oh wait, no, wait, I hear him. Chris, Preston, there? there? Something, Something happened here. I, I can hear Preston, but he's not. We're wrap this up. He took his laptop to the crapper. Anyways. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. We, we asked you if you had any closing statements. No, I'm good. You're good. Oh, he's good. Tell where they can find you, then. Subscribe to my channel. Which is? 619 Apocalypse. Yes. Or I did it for. 619 Apocalypse. John? Uh, vocal aggression. All right, guys, and you know me because you're on the channel, but uh, I've been Fact, he's been John, he's been Preston. We are your YWC Reality Checks. Subscribe up there, talk down there, start a conversation, keep our conversation going. Don't be a stranger, and all of us will talk to all of you later. But for right now, we're tagging out. Bye, guys.